Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. There's been some confusion surrounding non-Steam games on Steam Deck and how to clean them up when you're done with them. These contribute to the dreaded filling of the other storage on your internal drive. Today we'll look at the components of a non-Steam game and how to properly clean up after yourself when using these non-Valve supported titles. Stick around. When you install a game directly from Steam and subsequently uninstall it, SteamOS does a pretty good job removing all the parts of the installation. But what about when you add a non-Steam game to Steam? Who cleans up the mess after you uninstall it? Well, the answer, of course, is you. After all, Valve doesn't oversee, curate, or otherwise manage things it has no purview over. When you add things manually to Steam, you're expected to clean up after yourself. Of course, to do that, you need to understand what mess there is to clean up, meaning you'll need to understand all the parts of a non-Steam game install, where they're stored, and how to remove them. Let's start with the three main parts of a non-Steam game install, then we'll cover the other possible two things that might need to be tidied up as well. All Steam games have three parts. They are 1. The Compat Data Folder, two, the shader caches folder, and three, the Steam entry that launches the title. Every Steam game, and non-Steam game, must have a Steam ID to properly identify it and link it up to the various parts of the Steam application. For real Steam games, they are assigned an ID value right from Valve, and these values are identical for every single Steam user. If we nip over to SteamDB and look up one of my favorite games, The Forest, you will see it has an ID of 242760. No matter what user or device installs this game, it will always have this ID. These values are typically seven digits or less in length, depending on how old the game is. Non-Steam games must have an ID too, but Valve has no clue, nor do they care, about what titles you're adding to Steam. So to keep everything in line, Valve assigns a random number for every single non-Steam game you install. This ID is crucial to the clean removal of the parts that made up the game. These IDs are typically 10 digits and really stand out in a list of other actual Steam game IDs. Right, so now we know how Steam identifies the game by Steam ID, even if it's a fake random one. That value is necessary to help us clean up when you're ready to get rid of that non-Steam game. SteamOS uses two folders to store files related to your non-Steam game install, Compat Data, and Shader Caches. These are the first two items we mentioned above. Both of these folders are located inside the hidden .local folder off the Steam Deck's home directory. There will be links in the description below. When you navigate to these folders, you will see numbered folders which as you probably have figured out by now, are named the same as the Steam ID. So if you had the forest installed, you will see a folder in Compat Data named 242760. We'll talk more about this in a minute. The second folder, Shader Caches, may or may not have a corresponding Steam ID named folder. There will likely be one, but don't worry if for some reason you don't see one when you go looking for it. We'll discuss this folder in more detail shortly. The third item on our list is the entry as it appears in Steam. Your non-Steam game shows up just like a real Steam game, well, mostly. It may be missing artwork and all the Steam provided metadata won't be there either. The important part of this item though is that it's the very last thing that you remove. Many people believe that if they delete the non-Steam game from Steam that this is all they need to do. Unfortunately, this isn't true. Valve washed their hands of you when you installed a game not from their system. I did mention two other things that could be part of the equation. First, if you use some sort of an installer like EA App or Battle.net or any other setup.exe or the like, when you created your non-Steam game, you may not have known you can delete that setup file once you were done with that Great Monroe World YouTube tutorial. This would be the fourth thing you would want to make sure is cleaned up when all is said and done. That leaves us with number five, externally stored game files. This is very common when someone installs a third-party launcher or digital locker like Ubisoft Connect or Battle.net. 
Typically in my tutorials, I encourage the user to put their default download folder for these lockers on the micro SD card to avoid not only size restrictions, potentially from Proton, but also to keep the games off the internal storage. It shouldn't surprise you that if you delete the EA non-Steam game app from Steam, that it does not remove any games you installed with EA. Unless, of course, you let it install into the Proton Prefix folder. More of that in just a minute. Those are the five things that must be cleaned up. But it isn't just the items, but the order does make a difference in some cases. And we're going to tell you exactly what you need to delete and which one to do last. If you just came here to figure out what you did wrong, the answer may already be clear. If you deleted the non-Steam game from Steam first, that's what you did wrong. You may have also deducted at this point that the only record of that Steam ID is, that's right, Steam itself. Once that entry is removed from Steam, so goes your record as to what all those randomly numbered folders contain. Despite the useful nature of tools like Proton Tricks, which is one of your single greatest allies in the fight for identifying non-Steam game IDs, once the Steam entry is gone, you're going to be deleting folders you have no idea what's in them. I have a couple of videos I'll link going over this process. But I promised you an order of cleanup, so let's get this show on the road. Obviously, deleting any game storage externally, like, say, Overwatch 2 from the external SD card if you installed it there from Battle.net, that's a good first step. You could leave it behind if you like, with the thoughts of installing Battle.net again later, but you're looking to get space back, right? So, either uninstall it from the launcher itself, or just nuke the folder from Dolphin. If for some reason you still have those installer EXEs in your download folder, or located somewhere else, those should go too. Keeping around launcher installers like Battle.net or EA installer is just dead space. Dust off and nuke them from orbit. Since we know, well now anyway, that removing the title from Steam is the last step, that leaves us with deleting the two folders we mentioned earlier, Compat Data and Shader Caches. But should you mindlessly trash these two numbered folders if you're done with the game? Maybe, maybe not. Let's start with shader caches. If you don't know what shader caches are, I highly recommend you go right now and watch my videos on shader caches and you. Pause this video and check it out. I'll wait for you, go ahead. Shader caches can be a good hit on your internal system storage, so why might you not want to outright delete them? Shader caches for Steam games are generated over time. As you play, the cache is built. That shader cache folder on Overwatch 2 may have six gigabytes of shaders compiled over hundreds of hours of play. What if you want to play Overwatch 2 again in the future? Do you want to rebuild all those shader caches again? If not, feel free to delete that shader cache's Steam ID numbered folder. But if you may play again in the future, let's copy that off to a PC or some external storage somewhere so you can restore those shader caches again at a later date. That leaves us with one more thing to look at. That is the Compat Data folder. Now, before randomly deleting that non-Steam game folder, you should probably know what's in there. Compat Data folders are what is known as Proton Prefix folders. If you're not clear on what Proton Prefixes are, I encourage you, once again, pause this video and check out my video, Proton 101. Once you're clear on that, come on back and let's finish this up. So now you know the Compat Data folder is actually, along with other stuff, the simulated Windows environment that the game runs in. This also means that something you may care about might just be in there, and that is your game saves. That's right, since your non-Steam game isn't part of the Steam ecosystem, there aren't any cloud saves. Now granted, your Witcher 3 GOG edition running from the GOG Galaxy non-Steam launcher may have backed up your save files. But do you really want to run the risk of dozens of hours of Geralt monster slaying to be lost? Much like the shader caches, you may want to back up the Steam ID named Compat Data folder to make sure your save files are not lost. This goes without saying that any non-Steam game that has saves and isn't part of a third-party launcher system, like Galaxy, EA, or Battle.net, etc., really should be backed up. Just copy that folder to some bulky storage on your PC or thumb drive, should you need it, your butt's covered. Finally, with all of your installers, externally stored games, compat data, shader caches cleaned up, you are ready at long last 
to delete the game entry from Steam, confident that you've reclaimed every last morsel of storage you possibly can with no orphans or stragglers competing with your next big install. There you have it, the rather laborious but guaranteed clean way of tidying up those nasty non-Steam game installs. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your like, subscription, and election to get notified about our latest videos. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and as always, take care.